Welcome to my video. We about to learn C++ in about 31 days. Stand by. This video is about to start. This is the Savage Scientist Ed right here. And I'm the owner of the police You saw the intro, so you already know who I am. I'm the Savage Scientist Ed, if you don't know. So now it's time to talk about what's about to happen. This is going to be a 31-day, 30-something day journey to learn the C++ programming language. So if you see me looking here, looking there, looking all over the place, I have monitors all over this place. So we about to learn C++ from the beginning to the end. So what I'm saying is that you're gonna, if you don't have no experience with programming, no experience with C++, then this is the video for you to watch. And also this, this video is gonna be supplemented with this. This is what I use to learn C++ in 1998 or 1999 one of it was a long time ago with this book it took me two years to read it so i'm going to take all the knowledge i have from that book the stuff i think is relevant and we about to put this in this video along with some other things that's not in that book we're going to talk about data structures c plus plus programming and all kind of other crap so it's time for us to get this thing started right and now the prereqs for this class, two things, computer and the internet. And let's assume you have a little bit of space on that computer. And now, the course outline. This is a 31 day mission, and so far we only have 19 topics on here, or 19 days. This is gonna expand as you get further into the course. So I would probably say around day 14, you're gonna start seeing day 20 to 31 appear down here in this course outline. So. Let's talk about the things that we're gonna address here. So first, so we on day one right now. Introduction to programming and setting up Dev C++ and Visual Studio Code. We doing that today. So tomorrow we're gonna be doing Hello World and right now first C++ program, but here's a spoiler. We actually gonna write Hello World in this video. And we're gonna talk about it more in a second video. So. After that, we're gonna talk about C++ keywords and syntax. We're gonna be getting user input on the fourth day. And on the fifth day, we're gonna talk about data type variables and naming conventions. And on day six, we we're really gonna start doing math. We're gonna be doing arithmetic operations. So that means we're gonna be doing things like adding two variables, int x plus int z. And we're gonna compute the sums and all that good stuff so stay tuned to day six we're gonna really start getting into what this is all about and we're gonna talk about the boolean and logical operators and we're gonna recap all this stuff that we learned up to this point on day eight and when we get into day nine we're gonna start talking about loops and conditional statements and we're gonna get into those dreaded c plus plus functions and we're gonna get into the even more dreaded C++ pointers and references. We're gonna talk about function pointers. Ooh, them son of a bitch, we are no joke. Function pointers, ooh, wee. We're gonna talk about structs. And then we have three days on object-oriented programming. And then we're gonna talk about exception handling and debugging. Then we're gonna start talking about some data structures and STL. And we're gonna recap all of this on day 19 and then we're gonna follow with day 20 to 31 with most stuff. And now more about me. If you don't know who I am, I'm the Savage Scientist Ed. And sometimes I say the governor of the state of Swampland. So what I mean by the governor of the state of Swampland, when you subscribe to this channel, you become a citizen of the state of Swampland and I'm the governor. So we have that going. So welcome to the state of Swampland from the governor himself with a big salute. Boom. So I have a degree in computer science and I've been writing code for a long time. And I've been doing research, researching in cybersecurity, computer forensics, and all that good stuff. And as you stick around my channel, you're gonna see more and more of this appear in upcoming videos. So it's gonna be a lot of topics in this series and I'm also gonna do more things in computer science. I used to cover Uber a lot on my YouTube channel, but we doing coding and computer science and technology. That's why it says computer science and technology. This is the Savage Scientist, and damn, I can't wait to look back at this video and see how my channel banner 
changes in about three years. So we got that out the way. So now it's time to get started. Well, I would have to say programming is the task of automation. Programming is making a machine, basically a machine, do what do something on its own. And that is by a trigger, an event, or something. So the easiest, the, my first time programming something was programming a VCR. You're going to set this VCR so you don't have to be there for it to record your favorite show. So first you have to set the clock so the VCR would know what time to record your show. So it's automation. You're automating the task. So when you go home, your show is recorded because you was at work at 7 o'clock or whatever time the show came on. So let's take a look at how that applies to computers. So let's look at a computer as a multi-purpose machine. That is really what a computer is, multi-purpose machine, right? So a computer is a general purpose machine that could be programmed similar to a VCR to do tasks or to handle things, to take care of stuff that you don't have the time to do or you don't want to do it all the time. So like printing a document, just imagine you have to keep writing that. So you, they create programs to print documents and do things like that. So programming is basically automation. And we're talking about simple automation, like doing something that you might have to, so you don't have to be there and witness this automation occurring, like programming a VCR. Or a computer is basically a machine that could do a lot of things. So let's talk about computer languages. I'm about to start this section off with a good joke. I remember asking somebody in the ghetto, if you could name two computer languages, I'm gonna give you $20. What'd you say? Oh, why you ask? Oh, I thought I left something at the ATM. Oh, no, I thought you were police. Give me $100 now, I tell you. Oh, I will. Name three computer programming languages. Three computer programming languages? Yep. What you mean? And then I'll tell you if I'm a police or not. What you mean by that? <laughs> three, computer, three computer programming languages. No, it got to be real computer languages. Basic is one of them. <laughs> huh? Hey, I got a YouTube channel, Savage Scientist. Savage Scientist. Subscribe to it and check it out. So this nosy person didn't right, know any computer programming out, languages, so I didn't not. answer any All of right. his questions. So let's move on. Here. So let's talk about what a computer language is. So. Computer languages are basically the languages that the machine understand. And they are not, they, so we understand English, French, Spanish, and all that stuff. So what a computer language is, is, is a way of writing code for the computer to understand. And those codes follow rules. Each language has its own rule, just like our spoken languages, like English, Spanish, and all that stuff. Each of those followed certain rules and we call those rules syntax and we're going to get into more of that in another video but let's just keep this simple for right now so computer language so there are a lot of computer languages but before computer languages were standardized we had stuff like like we're going to start at the bottom of this pyramid we had the hardware level right here the hardware then had machine language Machine language was this complicated instruction-based language that, that programmers used to access areas of memory for the computer to do certain tasks. And we kind of simplified that by going into assembly language. Assembly language is basically more human understandable and it translates to a one-to-one -one correlation with machine language. So things were getting a little more humanized. So then we came up with high level languages. So those are the languages that we understand. And really when you look at this, this line really don't exist here. I don't know why this graphic all screwed up like that. So high level languages are stuff like C, C++, Pascal, Java, JavaScript, Kotlin, Python, COBOL, uh, 
Shit, they have a um, lot of computer languages. So each of these languages are independent. They have their own uh, purpose. Like some people, like uh, COBOL, that's a business language. I don't remember what it stands for. So you have SQL, that's a database language. And C++, more of a general purpose language. And C++ came from the C language. And the plus plus just mean that you have object oriented stuff on built on top of C. So we're going to get into that later as we progress in this uh, course. So let's move on here. So the C++ language is a compiled language. And what I mean by compiled is when you create your source code right here, the source code is going to you're going to go through this process called compiling. And what compiling means is it's going to take linked li libraries and all this other stuff and smash it all together and create an executable. Uh, or it's going to create an executable file that is going to be specific to that computer or that machine that you're running. And when you run that, that uh, executable, it's going to translate into machine code. So and that's why we have this circle. It says machine code and we have this hello world right here. So... This hello world is just is just uh, the program running. So so this is more of what you would see in languages like C++ and C. And down here we have languages like Java. Pretend like that say Java and Python. That say Python even though it look like it say Ruby, but Ruby Python both of them are interpreted languages. So what an interpreted language is, you start here with the source code just the same way that you do in a compiled language. It's going to take all the, it's going to go out and find libraries and smash all that stuff up into a sandwich. And we're going to call that our executable code. But the difference is the executable code runs in a virtual machine for that language. So, so you actually going to install this virtual machine on your device. So you're going to have the Java virtual machine installed on your iPhone or whatever phone that is. That looks like an old iPhone. So, so instead of just clicking on that, that uh, executable, you have to make sure you have the Java interpreter. And that's why sometimes you have, you, have, you have a lot of people saying, oh, I don't have Java. You have the wrong version of Java. You have all this Java crap, all these Java problems on your computer because you might have written your code in Java 2.1. So this person have Java 1.5 written on their com installed on their computer. So that means the Java 1.5 stuff is not going to work because you have an old version of the Java interpreter on your computer. Even though you have that same executable, you have to update your interpreter to 2.5 and now you can see all the good good 2.5 goodness running on your cell phone. So that's basically what it's the difference between a compiled program and an interpreted program. But languages that's compiled are typically much faster because you don't have this interpreter slowing things down. And, and at the same time, you also have direct access, uh, almost like machine code fastness going on. I mean, it's not as fast as machine code, but you don't have this slowing things up. And now we just have a whole bunch of mess on the screen. So... Let me clear this. So basically what I'm saying is you don't have things slowing down the compiled language like an interpreter. And sometimes this interpreter is written in another language, a high level, a, a, um, not a, a, a compiled language like C++ or C. And then that part is turned into machine code. So really it's like you're going to start here, go here, and then you're going to jump here to here with an interpreted language so this is not really a good slide to show this but what I'm saying is this don't have nothing to do with learning how to program this is just some basic information you might want to know whenever you start talking and start getting familiar with the concepts of programming and that is a compiled language is translated directly into an executable that you're gonna run on that specific platform like Windows Linux and an in, in, uh, interpreted language just mean that you write in for an interpreter. All right, I think I nailed that one through the flow. So now it's time to get C++ installed on your computer.
All right, so we're on the desktop of our computer. So if you're following along using a Mac or Linux computer, then you're going to do something similar. Do the same things. So what we're going to do first is create a new folder. And we're going to name this folder Programming. And just like that, this is going to be the folder that I will be referring to. And it's going to keep things simple for whenever we start working on projects. And speaking of projects, inside this folder, you're going to create a new folder called Projects, a new subfolder called Projects. So go in here, New Folder Projects. And we're going to create another subfolder, and we're going to name that one Downloads. Soon have I learned how to spell, folks. So we have downloads and projects. That is the folders we're going to be working out of for the rest of this course. So after that, now it's time for us to get C++ installed on our computer. So it's time for us to talk about two methods of getting C++ installed on our computer. That's our language, C++. So, like I said, C++ is a compiled language. So, to get C++ on our computer for compiling code, we have two methods. So, the first method is installing an IDE. IDE. And what IDE is, that's an integrated development environment. So, the IDE is going to come with a compiler and it's going to have a code editor. And I, and hopefully you could read that. So a code editor is a program that you use to actually display the, the code that you're writing. It could be something as simple as Notepad and have a separate compiler. As long as you save your file as a .cpp, it's going to compile into an executable. But an IDE is a program that combines both of these compiler and code editor. So we're going to look at one example of a um, code editor. So if you go to my YouTube channel and search for Visual Studio Code, it's going to present you with these two videos. So. If you want to install Visual Studio C++, just follow the steps in this video. And if you have any problems, follow the step in this video because there is a known error right now that's it, that whenever you install in the compiler, you might get this error that says file has been downloaded incorrectly when installing the min gw64 compiler. I have two videos on that, so I'm not going to discuss it, but if you have any trouble, just follow these two videos. First one is installing Visual Studio Code. And if you have trouble, just go to this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an IDE since I haven't discussed this on my channel. And if in, in people with Linux and Mac, I'm going to take care of your um, specific situation too because I'm going to do a video on installing Visual C++ on Linux and one on installing it on Mac. So now it's time for us to install an easy, no-nonsense way of getting some C++ programs compiled on your computer so you don't have to worry about installing two separate programs. We're going to do it with one. So I'm going to have a link to this program in the description of this video. So first of all, you're going to go to Dev C++ and download it. And you're going to save this download in your folder on your desktop or if you decide to save it somewhere just save it somewhere so you could get access to it so save it on your desktop in the folder called programming so now that it's downloaded and it's in place so let's navigate to the folder so it's in downloads right so there it is right there so you're going to double click on it now is now we're going to get presented with the install installer so First is load and setup. So once it's done load and setup, let me close this. And I want you to see this. So we're going to select English or whatever language you have. It might be Spanish or something. So we're going to do that. And then next thing going to pop up is this user agreement stuff, the normal stuff. So 
we're going to click next through all this and we're going to install it in the default location let this install so now so this is what it looks like once you install and extract the program we're going to just hit next through all this crap and yes we're going to use all this keep everything default and basic because we just trying to start writing some code so this is what it looks like dev c plus plus it's a pretty nice lightweight program so we can start compiling stuff now and writing c plus plus so go up to file and then we're going to select new file new project and this is where your desktop location where we have that project folder is going to come in handy so we're going to create a console application console application then we're going to go to our desktop and this is why our desktop is so easy because you could easily get to it and select that folder so you're going to select desktop and here go our folder called programming right there we're going to select that folder and there it is downloads we're going to put it in our projects not download so select projects and now we have project one in the projects folder so this is where all these projects that we're going to work on are going to be saved even if whenever we start using visual studio code or if we start using another project another c plus plus compiler we're going to put all those projects here so there it is so now we have our code all it's it's almost it's almost written so we want to write hello world to the screen. So come here and just type in uh, STD COUT. I want you to type in exactly as I'm writing this. And then we're going to put these two greater than signs here and type in the word hello world. So if it automatically put an extra um, double double uh, quotation mark up there then erase one you need to have one after the D and one before the H in hello world and then we're gonna put a semicolon at the end and then we're gonna go up to file and save and we're gonna save this as main so when we save main we're gonna go back into our project one on our desktop all right, so on our desktop, here it is. Here's the programming folder. So we're going to put it in the programming folder. It's big, so you won't miss it. So now we're going to just save our main program in the projects and then hit save. And this should also make it so next time you go into, into this program and start using it, you won't have to keep going into all these different folders. We have the folders already saved into the program. So is going to easy it's going to make it easy for you next time so what we're going to do is name this we're going to create this main so hit save and there it is so now we're going to go up to execute and then we're going to do compile this is the step that creates the program so we're going to compile hopefully no errors so let's see zero errors zero warnings so that means we could run it so go back up to execute and then we're going to do run we're going to hit the run that are hit f10 either one we okay so here it is hello world pops up it popped up on my other screen but here it is hello world right there so this is the first video in this series and continue on to the next video where we're going to explore more c plus plus programming and in the next video I'm going to talk about what all this stuff means. So stand by for the next video. Peace out.